Okay, welcome to video number two of the automated playoff builder for commissioners of Penn and Chase Leagues. If you did not watch video one, I highly suggest you do that because you're going to be a little lost. So go back and watch video one. Here is video two. Quick reminder, this video is geared toward people who have already run leagues on Penn and Chase. If you haven't, that's okay, but you might be a little lost as we go through some of this. Uh, and what we're going to focus on here is we're going to focus on the three steps that are required to tell the system how you want to automatically build out your playoffs. And once you do that, what will happen is at the end of the regular season, the system will build out your first round. And as you simulate games throughout your playoffs, it'll build out subsequent rounds as well. So you won't have to, to build your playoffs throughout the whole thing. And the nice thing here is if you keep the same playoff structure season after season, you only have to build this once. You're never going to have to build it again. If you change your structure, then yes, of course, you'll have to rebuild your playoff uh, matchups. But if you don't, you only have to really deal with this one time. Uh, there is one important thing I want to point out before we dive too deep into this. If you have a complex playoff structure, like let's say you run a college league with double elimination or whatever, sorry, you're going to have to continue to do things manually. This won't work. This is going to work for you know a simple bracket structure playoffs, and you can have it up to five rounds, right? So I think most leagues will be able to use this, but I just want to note before we get too deep into it that if your playoffs are complex, you're doing a bunch of reseeding each round or something like that, you're not going to be able to use the automated builder. You're going to have to do things the old school manual way, which by the way, you can continue to do, use Pen and Chase the old school way if you want to. Okay, that still works, but this is an option to do things a lot more automated. Okay, so step one of the playoff builder. Now, the first thing you have to do is set this first drop down to yes. If this first drop down is set to no, uh, nothing's going to work. The playoff builder will not actually trigger. Um, so this is just a way to say, yes, I want to build my playoffs right when the season ends. Your next option is the order of the playoff seeds. So you get two options here. You can either say your division winners get the top seeds, or you can say the best record gets the seed, regardless of whether they're a division winner or say a wild card, right? So in, in option number two, if your let's say your, your number one wild card has a better record than your division winner, then that wild card is going to be seeded higher, right? For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to make our division winners the top seeds. Okay, and then you've got this option to set your tiebreakers. Now, for a two-team tiebreaker, you have you have five different criteria you could set and many different options. So you can see here that what I have done is I have selected head-to-head -head record as my first tiebreaker, then record within division, record within the league, and then the run point differential. That's And I didn't set a fifth one. If for some weird reason, none of these actually work and break the tie, PC will default to the power ranking um, tiebreaker as the sort of default tiebreaker. But um, odds are this is going to work just fine, right? Um, if you want to run like a one game playoff, that's going to be a little different. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to select the option that says stop and do not build playoffs. So what's that? what that's going to do is if there's a tie between two teams, the system's going to stop and it's going to send you an email and it's going to say, look, you've got to go in and you've got to build your one game playoff. And then you simulate that one game playoff and then the system will automatically build out the playoffs as you we're hoping it would, right? So, and it explains all that in this little pop-up. I'm not going to read this whole thing because this pop-up is basically saying what I just said, which means if you want to break ties with a, with a one-game playoff, you've got to choose the stop option, and then you have to build the playoff game, and then you have to simulate the playoff game as a regular season game, and then your playoffs will automatically build after that, okay? So I know what I said might be a little confusing, but um, if you don't care about doing like a, a you know, a, a playoff game at the end of the season in the case of a tie, then you're probably going to be fine just using these tiebreaker options, right? So I'm going to set um, the tiebreakers up here as I described. Now, the next option is breaking a tie between more than two teams. And you only have two options here, and that's the run point differential and the PC power ranking. So, you know, ties between multiple teams can get pretty complicated, and they're most likely going to involve teams in more than one division, 
So for that reason, your choices are much more limited here. If you want to like manually break your own ties, you can certainly use the stop option here and manually break your own ties. That's going to be a little more complicated, right? Because you're going to have to go and edit the teams, edit the tiebreaker values, and then you'll have to rerun the playoff builder. I'm not going to get into that right now. That's going to be a whole different sort of discussion that we'll have to have if you really want to manually break your ties. But if you're okay with the system breaking your ties through these formulas, then you're not going to have anything to worry about, okay? So uh, you've set your tiebreakers. Now your next option here is to turn off the auto sims after the regular season ends. This one is hugely important, right? Because so many commissioners forget to turn off auto sims uh, at the end of the regular season. So, uh, and what happens when you do that? You forget to turn off the auto sims and the next thing you know your playoffs start simulating and then you send me an email and you say guy roll back my first round of games right and i've got to roll them all back and it's a real pain in the butt for all of us right so uh hopefully uh you will set this to yes and turn off auto sims if that's what you intend to do if if you have a league that just you know is on you know autopilot and everyone's really active and you don't want to pause anything you just want to go right into the playoffs and, and start simulating right away you want to go take a vacation in hawaii and have the system completely simulate your playoffs while you just sit on the beach you could totally do that right but most leagues are going to want to pause the auto sims so that um, the commissioner can check and make sure everything looks okay and that the owners are prepared for the postseason um, if you do that, once your once your first round of games, your first games simulate in the postseason, you can go back to change league settings and turn the auto sims back on, and and you'll be fine, right? But you probably want to pause the auto sims when the regular season ends, and you can do that here. Okay, the last section here on this uh, is um, the days off that are involved in the postseason. So you've got a, a selection here for days off before the postseason actually starts. And then you've got days off between each round of the postseason. And then you've got days off before your final championship round. And all those can be different values if you want them to be. Just note that you have to set a value for days off before the championship if you want days off before your championship. This is a specific dropdown that you have to pick a value for the championship round otherwise you won't have any days off before your for your championship all right so all this looks good and again i apologize that the screen recorder can't show you the actual values of the drop down unless i select it but i think you get the you get the point here these are pretty straightforward so i'm going to save and proceed and now what that takes me to is step two now step two is all about just telling the system which teams are going to be in the playoffs? Who are your playoff entrants? And these are basically your division winners and your wildcard teams, right? Um, so I'm going to click this just to show you the way my league is currently set up. Now I have an unorthodox league for the purposes of this demo because I just want to show you how this works. And uh, you can see that I've got um, an American League and a National League. I've got two wild card spots in the American League, but only one in the National League. I'm just showing you that you can have a lot of flexibility here. And um, also I'm gonna show you, because my National League is very small, right? Just three teams. And then I've got a holding team in a division that I'm not gonna use. And I'm gonna show you how you can exclude this team from the playoffs. Okay, so because a lot of leagues use holding teams to like hold their rookie classes or things like that. So if you have a holding team in a division you don't want to be in the playoffs, you can you can still do that. All right, so I've got my division to exclude and I'm going to select that National League not used because that's where my holding team is in. So I want to make sure that I click that. Again, if you don't have a holding team, then you don't have to exclude any divisions. And I'm going to click the Build My Playoff Entrance button. All right, I am now on to step three. Now, before I get into step three, I am going to go back to uh, step two, and I'm going to show you what happened here. So 
you can see now step two looks a little different. Step two now has my playoff entrance listed, and you can see it's got my East winner in the American League Central, West, my two American League wild cards, and my National League Central winner, because I only had one division in the National League, and my National League wild card winner. That all looks correct, and it excluded the division I wanted it to exclude, so everything there worked good. Um, Okay, you'll notice this page looks different, right? And what's different now is this big warning that says you've already saved your playoff entrance. The above button deletes and rebuilds your playoff entrance slots. If you're actively in the playoffs or if you created playoff matchups with these entrants, you probably don't want to click this button, right? So this is going to rebuild your entrance and delete any matchups you've created. So if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to rebuild all your matchups, don't click this button again. Just proceed to the matchup page. So I just want to I just want to call that out. And that brings us to the final step, which is to pick the actual matches that you're going to have. So um, think of this like a bracket, right, in, in your in your mind. So I'm going to actually go to my standings. And I'm going to take a look at my American League. So I've got two wildcard teams, and I've got three division winners. And I want the winner of this wildcard game to play my number one seed, right? So let's go back and do that. So we're going to pick the first round. I'm going to call it a play-in round. This is a, a new round option. Oh, actually, before I do anything, you see I've been messing around here. So I'm going to delete everything that's in there currently because I want you to see it sort of build out automatically. Okay. Okay. Um, so everything's cleared out of there. We can start fresh. Okay, so I'm going to do a play-in round game, and this is going to be, be between my number four and number five seed, right, in the American League, the last two seeds. The best seed gets home field advantage. Yes, you, mostly you're going to want to put this set to yes, right? If in this case, it doesn't really matter because I've selected the four seed as the home team, but you might have a situation where you have an upset and a lower seed advances and you actually want to flip the home field advantage. So that's why you would want that set to yes. And then you get to pick um, <clears throat> you get to pick what your series style is, right? So best of, and I know you can't see this drop down, but you get best of three, best of five, best of seven, different options. So I'm just going to select one, and you can see I've selected best of three, home away, home, so a one, one, one series, right? And then the last thing you can select is what kind of days off are going to happen during the series itself. So are we going to have days off during each travel day, or are we going to have days off after every two games of the series? Or are we going to have no days off at all during the series? So for the purpose of this 1-1-1 series, I'm going to pick a day off after every two games. So that would mean a day off after game two in this particular series. Okay, my matchup looks good. I got the play in round. I got the four versus five. Everything looks good. I'm going to save it. And you can see here, we now have our first saved matchup is showing up. It's the play in round. I get a matchup ID, which is important because you're going to use that to build out the rest of your bracket. And I've got my four versus five seed. All right, that's my first game, first round, play in round, I guess we're calling it. But I'm going to now go and create a first round game. Now, this will be my number one seed against my matchup winner of. The PI round and it's matchup 50 AFE2. There it is. So that looks correct. Bessie gets home field. Again, in this case, this value doesn't matter. You can leave it set to yes. It doesn't hurt anything. Let's say in the next round, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this to a five game series, a 2 2 1 format. And I'm going to uh, say a day off every travel day. Uh, in this particular format, it's actually the same thing as every two days. but Anyway, we'll just leave it. We'll leave it like that, and we'll save that. And so now you can see we've got our playing round wildcard game. We've got our first round game between the one seed and the wildcard winner. And now we're going to build out our second first round game, which of course would be American League Seed Two against American League Seed Three. And we'll do the same five game format just to keep it consistent, and save that. And now you see we've got a second first round game. Okay, now I'm ignoring the National League right now because I only have two National League playoff teams in this bizarre example I'm doing. So I'm going to save that for the semifinals. Let's build out round two 
which is now going to be the winner of my two. So you can see I'm picking the winner of my two first round games are going to play each other. And of course, here it's important to keep this best seed gets home field set to yes, because in the case of an upset, we might want to flip the home field, right? And then, uh, well, let's say in this neck, oh, we'll keep it as a five game, but we'll we'll go we'll switch to a two three format for this round, and we'll say a day off after every two games, and or actually let's let's switch it to travel day just to give one day off here in this series, and we'll save that. Okay, so now we've got this built out all the way up to our American League Championship winner. And uh, I'm now going to add my National League Championship because there's only two games. I'm, you could do your National League Championship technically here in any round, right? I'm just going to make it in the second round. And it'll be seed one against seed two for the National League. Uh, same deal. And then we'll save that. And now we have our American League Championship, our National League Championship. And so now we can finally pick the championship round. By the way, for your final round, you have to pick championship round. Don't pick third round or something like that. You have to pick championship rounds that the system knows it's your final it's your final game and your season's over, your final matchup. And here we only have, I know you can't see the drop downs, we only have two options left. By the way, these drop downs are eliminating teams as you assign them to a bracket. So the drop down is going to be very clear what your options are. So that makes it kind of nice to, to build this out. Um, and we'll just, so actually, since this is our World Series, let's change this. I'm going to say, so right now, I'm going to say it's, it's looking like I've got the National League as the home field. Let's say because this is the World Series, let's say it's been predetermined the National League, regardless of seed or record or whatever, is going to be home field. So I'm going to say no to the best seed gets home field. That means the home team, oh, I'm sorry, I've got the home team set as the um, as the American League. So, so the home team will always be the American League, regardless of the winner. And let's make the final series a 2-3-2-7 a two, two, game series, travel during travel day, and save that matchup. And bam, we now have our full bracket built out. Okay, that's a lot for this video. So what I'm going to actually do is split this into three videos. So I'm going to create the third video. The third video is going to be where we're actually going to simulate the games and watch the magic happen. We're going to watch all the automated stuff happen uh, in real time. So um, please tune in to video number three to see how all this stuff that we've built actually works.